Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. Today's date, April the 27th, 22nd, 2019. And what a great Monday today. I'm going to hand this right over to Miss Vegas and she's going to give us our watch list. And please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates. Okay, well, you know what? Happy Monday to everybody. And boy, oh boy, was I happy to come today because I was just loving what was going on. Um, the ones we're going to talk about tonight is Netflix, MBRX, KEG, ZYNE, and CGC. So let's start with Netflix. Well, uh, for those of you that uh, even follow on Twitter, uh, like I said, I do, I do try to post on Twitter on real time. Uh, I did share the Twitter, uh, a, a Twitter feed alert on Netflix, and uh, we did have an alert on Netflix that we did buy the uh, April 26th. Uh, expiry for the $380 calls. We picked those up at 53 cents and we even alerted it again today because when we bought them on Thursday, I mean, it was based on the fact that Netflix had pulled back and we were looking for the stock to do a reversal because now that the Disney news was out, I mean, Netflix is still a good company. I mean, the fundamentals haven't changed. So we did buy, uh, took advantage of the dips on the stock from Thursday. And then this morning, I started seeing that the stock was starting to revert. Well, I did mention to the room that, you know, those of you that didn't get the Netflix calls from Thursday, I mean, you still can buy the same calls. The only thing is they were a little bit pricier. They were now 79 cents, uh, which is really not much more. I mean, we're talking like about $24 more. And then, uh, you know, we had Rich calling out. Netflix calls for 385 strike, 395 strike. So anyhow, we had the ones that we picked up even today, the same exact call from Thursday from 79 cents. If you bought it today, this went all the way up to $430 a contract. So imagine you, you, you spend $79 today and you could turn that into $430. I mean, honestly, this is why I really love options for smaller accounts. I cannot stress this enough. And I am so happy when some people share today in the room that, oh my gosh, I made 100%. And when I say they made 100%, I mean, they bought the option call at 79. And I think they sold it at 160. Okay. And then they were upset that they didn't hold it longer because they could have made more. But you know what, you cannot go broke selling at 100%. That is just how you grow an account. When you're up, you're like 10 options then you sell half and you could ride the rest for free so at least you take out your initial but you know what congratulations to the netflix traders we're still in it my whole board is full of netflix calls that's all i have right now i've got netflix mcdonald's i got some qd i got quite a few different ones but i have a lot of netflix ones they all expire friday and i'm just of the bullishness of this chart so I'm going to turn it over to Jim in one second, but I do want to comment why Netflix is on the move as well, because, you know, besides the fact that the Disney news is out and Netflix is going to reverse, the thing is that people that subscribe to, um, you know, things like Amazon streaming, they also need the Netflix fix. So it's obviously evident that um, the Netflix users, they're not gonna go anywhere. I mean, a lot of them rely on Amazon Prime Video for their streaming activity. And, you know, apparently there's about 100 million Amazon Prime customers and the Prime Video service is available for no extra cost. And the other interest, interesting point for Netflix is that 64% of Prime Video users also um, subscribe to the Netflix. So if you have an Amazon Prime customer that offers access to video, it's apparently not early enough for two thirds of those users and they need their Netflix fix. And it's even bigger for the Hulu users, which as you guys know, um, Hulu users uh, is owned, majority is owned by Disney. So, and guess what? They also use Netflix. So it's like Netflix will be the basic cable of streaming video and the foundation that all other services are actually built on top of. So, you know what? That's actually interesting. So, Keep that in mind. And Jim, over to you on the Netflix chart. All right. I'm looking at the Netflix chart on the one-year daily. We did rise above the 20 SMA and had a nice little breakout today 
as you notice we're running up to a double top here here in the last month we've got that double top resistance right here at 377.47 right now after hours we're at 377.60 so we're getting ready to bust up up to where that wick is let's pull up the three month daily you see that 379 is the high and we're at 377.34 right now so what I'm thinking is if it pulls back any, it's going to pull back to this low support here right around the 371.11. If not, we've got another support level right here at 375.27. And I am 100% with Vegas on this. The fundamentals have not changed on Netflix. Just that they're going to be a little bit higher to receive the movies and stuff from Disney. Disney's going to undercut them. So it's going to be fun to watch both of these in a rat race to see which one wants to go up to the top. But a lot of investors are definitely invested in Netflix. So we got to break that resistance level of 379 to bring it up to the next two resistances. And that will be 381.43, 384.48. With a pullback support, I'm going to give you three numbers. And there's going to be another one right, right here. 369.02, 371.11, and if this 375.27 does not hold, they'll pull back to those other two supports. If not, we'll break this resistance level of 379, and that's Netflix. And congratulations, Miss Vegas, on your call. That was outstanding and beautiful, all in the same breath. <laughs> I take your breath away. Yep, you sure do. All right. So the next one we're going to talk about uh, is MBRX. And you know what? Jim was on this first thing this morning. So if you like to trade pre-market, uh, Jim's up very early and calls out trades. Um, so MBRX had news. And, you know, they're a company out in Houston. And they are a clinical stage pharmaceutical company. They have a lot of drug candidates targeting uh, tumors. And they did announce today, um, and they were having a conference call actually on the 24th, so this Wednesday. So I don't think the time soon. Um, but what they are going to discuss on this conference call, and this is what I really want to hear, um, they're going to talk about the significant discovery for lung cancer. Like, can you imagine? This would be like amazing. So I really am going to dial in on Wednesday, 4:30 Eastern Standard Time. They're going to talk about this. Now, the FDA has given them fast track designation. So uh, that was what the news was. But they're going to give more details of this significant discovery that they're going to talk about. And, you know, Jim said, you know, got to pay attention to the keywords, like significant discovery. Like that to me means big. Like this is huge news for them. And obviously, um, this was great news for the market. It, the market just loved this stuff. and uh, Jim was on it first thing in the morning and this went extremely high today um, called many many pullbacks called many breakouts uh, is the stock done well we're gonna hear about that from Jim in a minute uh, but MBRX had a nice high 19 so don't forget they haven't really announced the details of the significant discovery so I can't wait to hear it on Wednesday so we might see more stock again this week and Jim over to you to talk about that chart because this has run beautifully yeah I treated it pre-market and then I alerted it again about oh I'd say about an hour and a half after the market was open at 144 and that's when she really started taking off and let's pull up this is the the play of the day got in at 144 brought it up all the way to 298 I scalped it all the way up holding the core position we did point out a bunch of flags and places where I thought was a good entry level on this trade. And it was just a beautiful one of them trades that you just can't turn down all day long. It didn't get halted. It, it was respectful gains. It, and then it did knive a couple times, which I caught both knives and got in it. So there was a time where I was down a little bit. But eventually I cost average down on two of my trades today and was able to get out with a profit. I uh, maybe scalped it five or six times, keeping a core position and selling that core on the way up. But I did pretty good on it. I don't, you know, I'm not a big fat cat trader, but I do 
try to make an average of 300 a day when I do trade and it, I went way over that today so let's look at the chart MBRX and pull up I'm gonna find my uh, there we go you see the big run we had today this did have a low down here at the year down here at 78 cents that's a three-year chart there's the one year we did have a low down here at 78 cents and then she had a big gap down and then she bounced up today off that I think it was right around a buck so let me pull this up to a 20 day get a better look at it yeah she pulled up she started breaking out about three days ago back last Wednesday and then you had Thursday and then today you had the big run and it has pulled back after hours for another trade here to about 195 and bounced up to 221 so I'm gonna be watching this very close tomorrow for sure I'm not in it right now I figured it would probably pull back after that huge run so let's pull up the daily three minute you can see it beat it off the 200 SMA right here, bounced right off the 200 and right, in, right into the 20. And a lot of times when I'm looking at a chart and I'm trading these stocks, I look for that 20 day to start pulling back, releasing, and that's my exit point. And we did pull back to two of the moving averages that I do trade off of, and I've start, I trade off with the EMAs also, but these are the SMAs, the 50 and the 100. So we did hit that 319 after hours and it did pull back to that about two bucks, dollar ninety-five, and right now we're sitting at two two twenty-two and the tape looks green and red, as you can see right there. So we'll be watching this. I want to see it break a resistance of right around two twenty-eight. And if it pulls back, I'm thinking maybe right down here, right around one eighty-four. But I'm gonna be watching this real close tomorrow morning and probably pre-market, see if we get another pullback. If not, just have to watch how the ac action is on it but I do like when they say significant I'm gonna keep my eyes on it and the next one we're gonna talk about is gonna be keg oh my gosh keg is so good um, you know what I specifically just called this trade just because I liked the chart this morning and I liked the volume was coming in and I didn't know uh, at the time that when I alerted the call that um, Goldman Sachs had actually filed on, I guess what I was reading here on when the markets closed Thursday, um, you know, Key Energy Services, which is what it stands for, KEG, of $77 million. And um, the on Friday, apparently, Goldman Sachs, I mean, Gold, I mean, Friday, the market, you know, the markets were closed, but Goldman Sachs, it shows here, uh, filed a 13D, with the Securities Commission revealing that they had purchased a 7.5% stake in Key Energy Services. And uh, this is a Houston-based company, another Houston company. A lot of big businesses in Texas. Um, and, um, you know, they provide uh, U.S. onshore completion, maintenance, uh, and services to oil and natural gas. And we've talked about this, that oil stocks are going to be uh, moving and we've traded keg before this is back on the watch back on the swing trade list um people banked on a share today so congratulations to them and some people were definitely going to keep swinging this stock and just put in a stop loss nice chart on keg and obviously the move was not only from a technical perspective this the setup is there but obviously um you know the there's a stake here from goldman sachs uh, so we'll t we'll see how it goes. So um, you know, Goldman Sachs uh, acquired uh, 1.53 million shares of the company. So uh, looks like they're for investment purposes, and uh, we'll see what they plan to do down the road. Um, so Jim, over to you on the chart. Yeah, Keg had a yearly high of 1840, and then oh wow, then they let the air out of it, and then it went down to 159. So. And that's when we had the hard sell-off back in December. You can see how hard it got hit. It was up there right around the $7 area and pulled back to 159. And then she created a double bottom at the 159 area, bounced up once to resistance of 264. As you see, it was kind of hovering around that 20-day SMA. And then we had a nice little run on this thing all the way back up to 6 bucks, right about, oh, I'd say a high of around 638. And then now she's pulled pulled back respectfully, disrespected that 20-day, then started to bounce off 
the 50 and the 100 here in the last week. So we do have a high after Goldman Sachs initiated that little investment into their company off the 20 SMA at 416 and run all the way to 5 something, 534. So let's take a good look at this on the 20 day. You can see where she was up here right around 608 20 days ago, pulled back to a pivot point area of right around 425 to 454 and then we had that low down here at 314 with a support area of 333 last oh I'd say Tuesday or Monday and then she started bouncing she did pull back and hit that again at 333 and then today she, you could see the initial takeoff here that came out on Thursday and then she ran all the way up to a high of I'd say right around the 565 area and now we have a little descending pattern going on with this trade so support level I don't want to see it go any below 505 if it does go below 505 we might see another support right around the 486 so those are the supports that we're going to be looking for we want them to hold and we do want to break a resistance of 553 bring it up to the next resistances up here right under six bucks and you're welcome anytime to stop this video and copy and paste these charts on use them for your own support system compare them to yours we appreciate it if you don't follow us our trades strictly just please do your own homework we are not not licensed and so the next one we're going to talk about is going to be z y n e yeah you know what too i just want to say something about the keg so okay say that, that goldman sachs uh you know they're going to um you know they're invested in this company now and it says here that in addition to its trading desk activities with key stock, uh, they're going to be a market maker for the stock. Interesting. Key energy. Uh, they're going to be a market maker. So that's interesting. Hopefully when that happens, uh, they're looking to, you know, um, attract investors to the stock and, and uh, attract more shareholders and hopefully pushes up the share price. So that's quite it. I was just reading a little more about that. So the next one. One, um, we're going to talk about as Z Y N E. So Z Y N E uh, just traded this one really from a technical perspective. Uh, some nice, nice volume here. Uh, alerted this one around the eight dollars and uh, ninety cents, and this went beautifully all the way up to the nine fifty. And still looking for this one to continue. It did have a nice upgrade. I believe it was eighteen dollars. Yep. So that could also be why there was some action and some interest in stock um so definitely one to watch as well and jim your comments on that one it's a beautiful little run today on zyne and it was called out in the room first thing this morning when we heard it off the scanners we do use trade ideas for a scanner so anybody's welcome to join our room for a free trial for two weeks and kind of see if it fits your groove so we did have a nice little run on this. It pulled back to right about 8.04 right here when she started breaking out this morning with a double bottom. I'm looking at a one hour daily chart right here. This is on 20 days. So let's pull up the yearly and just see if we can get a better perspective. We did have a 10, 12.50 high up here on top. I do see one of my old resistance lines up here from last year right around 11.78. But you could see it had a bottom there when everything sold off my crystal ball came out said we were going to have a good year this year and look it's already bounced up past resistance levels into a new channel that resistance level is right here right around 894 somewhere right around that area and that's where we broke out of today so let's pull up the 20 day again have one more look and then i'll bring it to a daily one minute i see a pullback support for your first one here at 932 and maybe another one right down here right around the nine dollar area I hate to see it go any below anything below nine dollars, and we might hit that double top right here at eight eighty-two. So I'm going to pull up the daily one minute. There's nothing needs to change on this. We did call a breakout today. I called an ascending triangle pattern. You can see it right here. It's more like a pennant, but it's an ascending. You got that top line right here with the triple top. And then finally, when it come up and broke out again. It hit that support level. I'll show you what I'm talking about right here. You see how that kind of triple triple top came in and then it pulled back to support, hit that trend line right there, and then bounced on up and created a new double top up here at 939. So we did pull back. Let me pull up 
Let me magnify this up to where we can see where we are after hours. We're at 942 after hours. We did have a resistance high of 965. So this support right here at 919 is going to be a very healthy one. We, we don't want to see it go below that. If it does, it will pull back to that right around here to that 9, 902, 903 area. And that's where I want to see it hold. I wouldn't jump into this trade. It did have a price target raise to $18, but you always want to just let the market tell you where, where it's going to go. This is ZYNE, and best wishes to you on this trade. And the last one is one of my favorite stocks, my probably my, one of my number one pot stocks out there next to a couple others, and that's CGC. So, you know, uh, just, you know, ZYNE, uh, you know, we've talked about this. I was just looking at some of my notes. Yeah. that I have because I I know I've talked about the stock before and one of the things that the that the company does you know just a ref quick refresher is that they do uh, first of all they they work with people that have rare and near rare neuropsychiatric disorders and you know there's a huge unmet medical need for this and they are looking at developing and commercializing the next pharmaceutically produced cannabinoid therapeutic which we've talked about this before and in the past, they did have at one time, um, uh, I believe back in February, actually, on ZYNE, they did have some news back in February, um, you know, with regards to the development that they were working on. So, you know, this stock, I think, is not done. I mean, they were awarded the international patent for treatment of arthritis with cannabinoid, with a cannabidiol gel back in February. So that they had that, they have like a gel. And um, they also got, uh, they, there was a really good article. I think I should post it again, and I'm gonna have to probably review it, but there was a really good article from one of the analysts that talked about how ZYNE will become a gem to institutions. So this could be something for sure, you know, that you should be watching, even for those of you that like to hold things longer term. Just keep track of the stock. I mean, we've been seeing, I mean, I've been seeing this stock, honestly, from like the $5 range and look where it is now. Um, they also did announce, like I said, back in February, not only that gel, but they also had announced a patent for the treatment of a fragile X syndrome. So this company is working on a lot of stuff. So keep this on watch. I like the analyst upgrade, but uh, the one that, could make a nice comeback from where it used to be back in the day and now our friends at cgc so you guys remember uh cgc uh last time had some news right do you guys remember what the news was jim do you remember the news on cgc yep so the cgc news uh that we discussed last week uh was that they were going to be um you know take first of all they got some upgrades from uh various uh uh, analysts, but they are taking over the ACRGF contingent cannabis company, uh, which is becoming federally legal in the U.S. So uh, looks very, very strong. There was a press release on this, um, and uh, you know there also was a, a release here. Remember, Constellation Brands also had some news. They entered into an agreement with CGC to modify warrants and other rights. Been a lot of activity with CGC. And also Merrill Lynch uh, also initiated, um, you know, an, a buy on um, CGC. And there were also a lot of other initiations, but CGC was one of them. So that was not too long ago. That was like on April 17. So both Merrill Lynch and Bank of America have initiated coverage on both ACB, CGC, and HEXO. And look what we saw today. What a huge move on CGC. Like to me, CGC was like, so, I mean, look at that. I mean, it was just a beautiful, beautiful move. So anyone that had the stock or options on this, well done. And Jim, let's hear about the chart. I mean, this, uh, this gets news constantly and they got constantly. A, they got a price target on this trade here for $80 a share. And I kind of, I kind of vouch for that. I think we will see eighty dollars pretty, pretty fast, pretty by this year. That's going to be, and I'm going to stick my arm out on a limb for that one right there. You got an eighty dollar target on it. So let's look at, let's look at the chart. 
first we're going to pull up a year that's what I always like to do first we did have a year high up here right around the 59.25 area this would be a good options play for you too on a pullback if you're watching this stock it always gives you a chance to get in it this was on CNBC last Thursday or might have been Wednesday night and they were talking about um, Steve White was talking about something about the company with merging with someone else and they were just talking away but that's off the subject so let's bring it up here we got the year high at 59.25 right now we're sitting after hours at 48.25 I'm gonna pull up the 20 day I'm gonna have probably erase some of these lines on this chart because it's getting pretty foggy and always like to redraw them up but we did have a nice pullback on this Thursday to right around 44.42 I did call it out in the room this morning for a run and it did run up. We're going to pull up the daily one minute. Kind of had a pull back right here first thing this morning, right here, right around the 45.29 area. And did dip down to about 45. And that was a perfect time to get in. You can see where it pulled back here, back here on Thursday. Had Did kind of break out pre-market and pulled back pretty good. But this chart, this stock will give you all kinds of ample opportunity to get in and at a cheaper price. So I'm thinking support level. On this is going to be right around the 46.80 to 47.13. We are at an 82.02 right now, and the resistance we need to break to bring it on up to the first target I have right here at 48.71. Let's bring it to 48.70. We'll go ahead and draw that trend line in there, and we're going to try to bring it up to 49. And then our our newest target is going to be $50. Once it hits that $50, it'll probably pause a little bit and then move on up but this is CGC this is one of my top favorite uh, medical marijuana stocks and that's what we just talked about with Zyne they're also into epilepsy with that cannabinoid and I do have epilepsy so I watch both of these very closely and this is CGC and then that will be it for the aftermarket report and I bet you Miss Vegas will have something to say and really congratulations today on her Netflix call that was just a beautiful call for the room a lot of people did very well on that and I'm gonna hand this over right to her yeah so you know just before we go like honestly like when I talk about really helping small accounts I mean this is really a good opportunity to really see these calls in real time you know check Twitter follow us there if you're not able to be in a room but you have Twitter on your phone at least you'll get notified of what we try to post um, I mean, I can't post every little thing that we do, um, but, you know, when there's a good opportunity, I will post. Um, the other thing, too, I want to say happy birthday to my little Gucci. And, Jim, you have a picture there of Gucci I'm going to send you. Oh. So you guys hear my little Gucci sometimes barking, and people have asked me, can you show us a picture of Gucci? So there he is. He's a little Maltese, and he's now a year old. I mean, I haven't had him for a year. I've only had him for like 10 months. Um, but you know what? I can't believe he's a year old. My little my little man's a year. So happy birthday to Gucci. And uh, thank you to everyone for listening, following, and subscribing. And uh, follow us on Twitter if you want, or stock twits. And we look forward to your feedback. Come by the room anytime. We're here to help. And uh, especially want to help people with smaller accounts. You know, those of you with a bigger one, don't need our help <laughs> so you're fine on your own so have a great night and see you guys and if you do want to sign up to our chat service we do have a page right here on our website i brought it up here chat room service we'd appreciate it if you signed in there we also have a twitter link and we also carry our stock twits and a few other links there on the side that you can follow us on too so this is the aftermarket report with uh vegas and jim today's date April the 22nd, 2019. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future updates on our YouTube channel. And this was one thing I'll leave you with is that I we love stocks.